I call the honourable member for Hasluck. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Deputy Speaker, some months ago um, I was approached I think by the one of my. in the chair tonight. Sorry, <laughs> I... sorry, Chair, uh, Madam Chair. <laughs> it's just the notes. <laughs> Uh, Mr Mike Smith, who has a small business that manufactures welding ovens. Mr Smith has been in business for himself for 20 years and during that time has established a highly respected Australia-wide reputation for designing and manufacturing high-quality welding ovens. As Mike explained to me over the years, he's built up an extensive client base that recognised these distinctively shaped ovens and would choose to order Smith Weld ovens because they were considered one of the, if not the best, welding ovens available. This is a fantastic achievement for Mike and a local West Australian business, and they should be commended because they have used their success to give back to the community by teaching young people their trade. Deputy Speaker, Mike and his, sorry, Madam Speaker, Mike and his company are one of two welding oven manufacturers in Australia, and the only manufacturers to provide an entire range of different welding ovens with distinctive round shape. This round shape was one that Mike designed himself and has spent many years perfecting. It is a shape that includes both functional and style elements that has become synonymous with the Smith Weld oven brand. In fact, there are no other Australian-made products even vaguely close to his product. For nearly 20 years of history and evidence in the design of these ovens, it would appear logical that Mike would be able to achieve trademark registration to protect these designs and the intellectual property they represent. However, Madam Speaker, when Mike approached me as his federal member, he was at the end of his tether on trying to achieve, achieve trademark registration for his two ovens. His claims had been rejected. This means that although Mike was clearly the author and inventor of his particular shape and the type of welding oven, there would be no protection within Australia for his design. Mike was without power to prevent others from creating knockoff products. All of Mike's intricate designs of his products that are required for trademarking were uploaded onto the IP Australia website, available worldwide as is the standard practice. Unfortunately, it would appear that an overseas manufacturer then decided to create a copycat product that is being imported into Australia. Mike is powerless to stop this from happening and has paid the price for his, in his own business. In simply trying to protect his intellectual property, Mike had found himself in a situation where his life's work was being devalued by cheap imported knockoff products. The reputation and respect for Mike's products have suffered under imported products that are being sold under the same name. Deputy Speaker, Mike's is a very sad story for Australia's small business and manufacturing. Madam Speaker, the problem that Mike has encountered is, and I believe is a serious one. Mike's products were denied trademarking registration based on the interpretation of Section 41 of the Trademarks Act 1995. It would seem that although ample evidence has been provided to meet all conditions for registration, the decision was made without much consideration for much of the evidence provided. When speaking to me, Mike relayed that, and I quote, it is concerning as their interpretation discriminates against Australian registered companies who have done the hard yards in designing a product over many years and can prove they were the original designers and builders of a product. Overseas companies not registered in Australia seem to have been given equal, if not greater, rights in terms of intellectual property. We would be at least expecting to play on a level playing field. Madam Speaker, I do not believe that Mike's request for an even playing field is unreasonable. Madam Speaker, I worry that Mr Smith is not the only Australian business that has fallen victim to this loophole within the Australian intellectual property law that allows Section 41 of the Act to be interpreted so loosely. I worry that other Australian businesses may also have had their intellectual property left unprotected due to the inability of this section of the Act to fully grasp the minutiae of the innovative Australian designs. I call on the Minister in the House to re-examine the intellectual property law in Australia so that Australian manufacturers and other Australian innovators can have peace of mind that their inventions have the full protection of Australian law. Manufacturing has, already, has always played a pivotal role in our economy and Australian manufacturing has been a great innovator. Madam Speaker, Australian small businesses and manufacturing has already had enough challenges facing it so far. Since the start of 2008 and under the stewardship of the former Labor government, more than 140,000 Australian manufacturing jobs have been lost. And thankfully, with the withdrawing and the abolition of the mining tax and the uh, carbon tax, WA manufacturing now is on a better playing and a better level field, but it still needs the protection that is required under the Intellectual Properties Act. It